Support WrestleTalk! Give us a subscribe. Going to a wrestling show is fun! You get to see big stars pull off spectacular moves while you get to drink a beer and tell them if they suck or not. But sometimes things don't go according to plan. Sometimes accidents happen, leading to incidents affecting the viewing audience and the wrestlers themselves. I am Luke Owen and these are five wrestling disasters. The WWE are very quick to tell you that there isn't anything quite like The Undertaker making his entrance. Whether it's at WrestleMania, the Royal Rumble, or the Great American Bash, Undertaker's entrance is an awe-inspiring spectacle, apart from Elimination Chamber 2010. Taker was to be part of the Elimination Chamber match itself, but whilst making his entrance, one of the pulsating flames caught his jacket and set it on fire. Undertaker immediately broke character, tore the jacket off, and ran to the ring. Reports from those in the arena said that he was given bottles of water while in his pot, and Taker suffered first and second degree burns on his chest and neck. He was given the option of doing an abbreviated version of the match, but insisted on going through the entire match, which lasted 35 minutes and 35 seconds. When he got back after the match, he was furious at the pyrotechnic guy who made the mistake. There is a reason why the first initial of ECW is extreme, as oftentimes the company would push their in-ring violence to the limit. One such case was in late October 1995, in a match between Terry Funk and Cactus Jack with Tommy Dreamer and Raven in their respective corners. During the match, Cactus used his trademark flaming chair, which had a towel wrapped around it to set on fire safely, and he went to hit Funk. But something went wrong and the Funkster was seen seemingly set on fire. I remember thinking, he's gone. Terry's gone before fate or luck lent a hand. The fire seemed to roll off Terry's shoulders as if by magic and Terry collapsed to the floor. In actuality, a fireball had not flown off the chair and Terry himself had not become ignited. Instead, the towel had been burning, not Terry. Although I'm sure that was small comfort to Terry as he was helped to the dressing room. Funk did suffer second degree burns to his arm and back and was furious with Foley backstage, but apologized to him the following day. It wasn't just just Terry Funk that got burned though, as several reports came out that fans around ringside were also burnt by the flaming town. In his second book, Mick Foley recounts a story of a fan who unsuccessfully sued ECW, Terry Funk, Paul Heyman and Mick Foley for the injuries he received. Only, Foley doesn't quite see it that way. His lawyers claimed he was then pushed back onto the burning chair and was an emotional wreck afterwards. So emotional that he hung out in the back and asked for a free t-shirt after the accident. So emotional that he was able to drive his truck with a stick shift home that night. The beast incarnate Brock Lesnar certainly is a scary dude. But what's scarier than a man who can quite easily suplex the big show? That same man holding an axe destroying a car. That's what happened on the July 7th edition of Monday Night Raw, when j, &J Security presented WWE World Heavyweight Champion Seth Rollins with a brand new car ahead of his big match against Lesnar. It turns out that Brock doesn't quite like cars, and he proceeded to tear it apart with axes. He swung one axe into the car door so hard it got stuck. He smashed it up so good he was able to rip the door off, which he then threw like a discus. Thankfully, he was far enough away from the fans that the metal part of the door landed on the concrete, but the other part flew into the crowd and hit a child. The kid was thankfully not hurt and was taken backstage to meet the wrestlers and was quite likely apologized to quite a bit. WWE immediately responded to the incident during last night's show. The fan was unharmed and declined any medical attention. Over to Japan now in a promotion called FMW, which specialized in hardcore wrestling involving barbed wire and fire, and sometimes both. Like the one that took place on May 6th, 1992 between Sabu and the Sheik versus Atsushi Onita and Tarzan Goto. The match only lasted around four minutes because the fire got out of control and put everyone's lives at risk. When the wind picked up and it was clear too much flammable substances had been put around the ring, Sabu bailed, but the Sheik carried on wrestling. Stagehands attempted to put out the raging fire while the 65-year-old, that's right, 
65-year-old attempted to throw a fireball at Onita. Amazingly, only one person was hurt from the match, the Sheik himself, who was sent home from the rest of the tour, returning later that month despite being badly burned. To show how wild things in FMW used to get, here's how Dave Meltzer flippantly talks about the match in the May 18, 1992 edition of the Wrestling Observer. Don't have all the details on the match, but apparently the ring caught on fire and Sheik was badly burned legit and had to leave the tour and return home for treatment. Also, Starman and Centurion and Horace Boulder beat Mr. Ganasuke and Shooter and Sambo Asako. WrestleMania 24 is best known for being Ric Flair's WW retirement match, though not his last match ever, but also for a horrific incident involving Pyro. At the end of the night, when The Undertaker defeated Edge to become the World Heavyweight Champion, fireworks went off to celebrate the victory. WWE reportedly spent $300,000 on Pyro for the event, but a cable that held fireworks on the southwest end of the Florida Citrus Bowl snapped and fireworks simply dropped into the stand. My 12-year-old son got burned on his leg. He twisted his knee when he ducked under the bleachers, and I have three welts on my back from a rocket that struck me. After the cable snapped, the batch of fireworks just hung there, burning above our heads. It was reported between 30 and 40 fans were injured during the accident, but thankfully no one was seriously harmed. While we do apologize to anyone who was injured and or alarmed by this occurrence, we take solace in the fact that the reported injury injuries were minor. I oh, bet you're glad we don't have pyro on shows anymore, or matches involving fire, or car doors near Brock Lesnar. But those are just five wrestling disasters. If you think we've missed any, let us know in the comments below. And while you're at it, you can find out about five characters too extreme for TV. And what was the real reason Kurt Angle was fired in 2006? Click the videos to the left to find out more. Go on, give them a click. Press subscribe and support WrestleTalk on Patreon. I have been Luke Owen, and that was wrestling.